Hello everybody, my name is Markiplier and welcome to Growing My Grandpa. Do you remember Discover My Body? Oh no 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 no. You've discovered the injection site. And I'm gonna do that now! Death! I am so happy! Discover My Body was a game by Yames. Yames is the guy who made Discover My Body. Discover My Body was an interesting horror experience where you were quite literally using technology to discover someone's body. It's just as disturbing as it sounds, but not in the way that you imagine. This is another game from the same developer called Growing My Grandpa. Equally disturbing title, and I imagine equally dis disturbing uh, mechanisms. Be the tutorial regarding the basic game mechanics? No, I think I could... What? I think, I think I, I think, I'm gonna go with no. I'm gonna figure it out. I regret it. Week one. Oh God, no. What, what have I done? <laughs> I excused Adrienne during music class today and spoke with her about her recent string of demerits. It was our first time meeting outside of our quarterly evaluations and I believe it went well. I can certainly understand Mrs. Richards in classroom's observation concerning Adrienne's emotional state. She was, of course, intensely shy when we first met. As I understand it, she is similarly withdrawn in her classroom activities and only speaks or acts when she absolutely must. Some things she simply will not do. Instead of participating in mandatory group activities, she will sit alone and accept that she will receive a demerit. Before the meeting, I read Mrs. Richardson's parent-teacher report, which allowed me to estimate some of Adrienne's home life. The parents are well-educated and come from a prestigious background, but they lack time to properly nurture Adrienne. She is often alone, and when she is not, the parents seem to understand the importance of warmth and affirmation when dealing with someone so young. Having two parents of this reserved and icy temperament exacts an inhibition in the child. The child's imagination is subdued, but only ostensibly, for it eventually finds its way into regular life. I surmise that I would be able to reach out to Adrienne by way of make-believe. Is that, is, that, is that Adrian? Why does Adrian look like the guy from the room? How are you liking your new house? You told me you used to live close by, but it can still be a big adjustment. A new room, a new school. Do you like the decoration that I put in the place? My slanted apple? My wardrobe? The one grandfather clock sitting way in the shadows? The empty void of nothingness? Adrian, this is built to make you comfortable. Okay. The basement. I like that. The basement? Yeah, well, there's a lot of cool stuff. Mom and Dad sent me down there. Your mom and Dad made you go. Yeah, but there's a lot of cool stuff. Well, that's not why they sent me down there, though. Why did they send you down there? Fighting. They were fighting, shouting. I came in to help and they shouted at me. They said, go clean up downstairs, so I went. That sounds tough. Did they fight a lot? No, well, hey, uh, it's all right, Adrian. Maybe you can tell me more about this basement. It sounds creepy and dark, just like my room here. Does they have a grandfather clock in the basement? Okay, well, it was weird at first, the stuff down there. But cool, I found something living, sort of. That's very interesting, Adrian. Please tell me more. I don't actually want to know more about that. By indulging her in her fantasies and stories, I was able to glean more of an understanding of Adrian's anxiety surrounding her home and parents. The symbols of Adrian's story seem to carry their own traumatic weight, and her exploration of the basement may very well be a vehicle for the conveyance of her anxiety. Whatever might come of her next meeting, whether she will engage in similar make-believe, I will set down her story here. Adrian's story begins with her delving into the basement with a trash receptacle and a goal, and the goal of cleaning up. That's my goal. I'm gonna clean up, and then I'm gonna grow my grandpa. Easy peasy. She discovered one of the walls was covered in plastic bags. She went to investigate, intent on tearing away whatever they covered. Oh, I'm in the basement. Well, that was awfully sad. I didn't, uh, trash bags. Oh. Oh. Ah. What am I grabbing? What am I- what am I grabbing? Please tell me these aren't centipedes, and they're just like pieces of tape or something. Upon removing the plastic trash bags from the wall, she noticed their interior lining was covered in glass. Like a window, I offered. No, she said. Like a mirror. Oh, reflecting inwards towards the animal they- What? Wait, an animal? Animal? I gently asked her what exactly this animal was. Here's where the material reality of the story took a turn for the explicitly fantastic and imaginary. Oh my god. 
Oh, that made me like viscerally uncomfortable which is a trademark of James's style. Upon her discovery of it, at her gaze it grew or extended its shaggy-haired self. Hair like the fur of a dog, I offered? No, she said. Maybe I should just stop offering suggestions. Not the fur of a dog, nor the hair on her head. It grew outwards towards her, the animal's hair reaching out. It was hard, standing almost straight like the hair on a brush. A bristle, I offered, she said. Yes. She was very afraid at first, but then very curious. I'm just afraid. I don't want to touch it. I asked her what else was in the room. More things hidden away, she said. Things of grandpa's at well, as well. First, she found a hidden passage under the stairs. Inside were strange dolls, magic objects, naked, faceless figures. Naked, faceless figures? All of these are very strange. I heard these cryptic utterances and merely nodded. <laughs> yeah, that's all I can do. In order to keep the game of make-believe going, I only press for details where I thought necessary. The faceless dolls could be a simple metaphor for the anonymity she feels in her own home. The hidden passage, I am unsure of what to make of that. The revealing of the concealed seems to be thematic in her fantasy. The door under the stairs is but one example. Oh, are you saying this is all fantasy? I I have a funny feel. Oh, Gucci, 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 Gucci. Okay, fine. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I don't know what that is either. Yeah. Oh, great. Grab, 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 grab. Okay. The darkness of the shadowy corner unnerves you. You cannot explore here without some form of light. You sure about that? I'm sure about that. Okay. I don't know if I want to explore there. What? <laughs> Trash pile. I'll take care of this. Never mind. No, I won't. All right. No, I won't. Oh, of course. Ah, yes. Now let's just take the weird glue. Once she removed the panel and found the magic hidden passageway, she was very specific about what she took. She found a magic book, a magic doll, a photo of her late grandpa, and magic glue. <sighs> Hi, how are you doing? Good to see you. Mind if I step in? Uh, just go take this doll! I hate this doll! A slouching doll, its material is rough and coarse. Hey! <coughs> oh, ah, hey, how you doing? Hey, uh, what's up, hey guys? It's me, Marco Blair. Oh boy, yeah, search the clock. Oh my god. Try some magic book. I found it, guys. I found the magic book, guys. Wow! The magic spell. Miss so much trash. Hope the, uh, faceless naked mannequins aren't staring at me as I work. All clean. This space will not be dirty again until next week! Who's making it dirty? What is this? Oh God, Grandpa! Grandpa! No! Grandpa, no! Read now. The verse. Uh, good luck on your trip to the Urals. Stay warm. What are the Urals? What are the Urals, Lixian? What are the Urals? Put the Urals in way too big text on screen. <laughs> okay, that's the Urals. Glue. All-purpose glue. But magic. Eurasian Step Shamanism and the Fusiform Gyrus, an interdisciplinary study in sympathetic magic, a dissertation, Jacob Hart. Oh my god. Uh, relating to magic and magico religious practices. <laughs> Folk charms, love spells, hagiographs, uh, Kazar Kaganate. What am I am I supposed to memorize? Is this story important? W uh, uh, Angel Heaven of Needles, <gasps> Heaven of Needles, Angel of Needles was best known, kept best by shamanic keepers or wards who suffer from face blindness, prosopagnosia, whether by birth. Okay, okay, it's extremely effective but terribly dangerous. So much. Oh, okay, okay. This is probably really important. Uh, oh, shit. Wait, no. How do I? Uh, <laughs> Okay, Lixian, you're gonna have to do something for me. You're gonna have to just take like really small snippets of that and you're gonna put it in a really creepy text to speak and make it really ambionic and uh, spooky. This nexus of magical religious meaning making sorcery regarding human related desires 
and the history and science of neurological disorders related to the fusiform gyrus is where the subject of this dissertation will reside. I will outline further and then analyze the historical sources I mentioned previously, then I will go into the neurology of mystic and magical religious experiences. After that I will detail my ongoing correspondence with the resident of the Ural Mountain region who is an expert folklorist and keeper of traditions he claims have been passed down to his extended family for generations. I interrupted to ask what she did with these magical, mysterious materials. Grow grandpa, she explained plainly. And then without missing a beat, she continued on with her story. Well, I have no questions. That's self-explanatory. Nothing further needed here. Feeling this was a potent symbol, I stopped her again to ask what she meant. Somewhat puzzled, I did not understand immediately. She explained slowly. Grandpa lives in the cage in the other room. The cage behind the door. They grew people in the cage. I don't know how you can make it any clearer than that. Grandpa lives in the cage in the other room. The cage is behind the door. That's the cage they grew people in. Come on, it's basic! It's basic! Magiocentric... Alchemy, whatever it was. I don't even. Well, hi. Of course. Hello. Hi. How you doing? Hey, Gucci, 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 Gucci. Boing, boing, boing. Want a wet willy? Okay. Well, hate that. Am I done here? Door. Door. And you were all. Oh, a note. Great. A hastily written note. Yeah. I have repeatedly called your homes to no avail, and so I am forced to leave this here for you all. I found William sitting in the corner of the enclosure area, seemingly severely concussed. Whiskers was gone, in none of its usual hiding places. I immediately suspected... Is that Whiskers? Is that Whiskers in... Is that whiskers under the trash pile? The project thus must be suspended for now. I am leaving up the usual mirrored coverings we use to keep the anthropoic... <laughs> anthropoidic void sealed. I've done my best to lock up everything on such short notice. It is a hasty fix, but it will require some time to find a more permanent remedy. I am honestly hoping you do not find this notice. I intend to lock the house down, too. I intend to race off to you to retrieve your lockbox keys. Do not worry about William's key. It and the rest of his equipment is almost certainly deep within whiskers now. I pray you do not enter this room. No matter how it may appear, William cannot be helped, and his only being kept alive is a means of continuing predation on the rest of us. I will say once again, no matter what state you may encounter William in, he cannot be helped. I have sympathy for the young man, I truly do, but I found on his person several photos of his late sister, which would imply certain risks he knew he was taking. What do you, what do you, what do you, what do you, what do you mean? Our extant research materials have now become possible liabilities, either criminal or professional in nature, so I have stashed them away. I believe I let you all know how I might do this if we were ever to experience an event such as this. I hope you all remember what I told you. So long then, Dr. H. H stands for hot. So, oh, what is, what is this? Regarding growth, every time whiskers regenerates and leave dormancy, it is to be logged as a new propagation. The sample's bodily existence cannot be illegible, i.e. a part of cannot can be cut from the whole, so there can only be one living propagation. Propagations are to be terminated after five weeks. Any further development? Dr. Hart! The H stood for heart. A termination procedure will be posted. I welcome you. Look forward to... Okay, I'm reading these backwards. All right, read now. For the sake of the university policy and the health of a future career, you hope to have abide. Am I to understand? Hold up, pause, pause. Time out, time out, time, time, time. The thing next to me is whiskers. And what you're telling me in these notes is the thing next to me is a hyper lethal organism that is trying to pre pre be a predator to us and me in this basement where I am. So my objectives are as follows. Clean the basement, grow my grandpa, not die to the anthropoidic void trying to kill me called whiskers. Easy. Couldn't be simpler. It must not be left unattended. Anthropoidal shells. I don't know what that means. Oh, God! What did, what, what did that happen? I meant to... That was probably really important information that I didn't get to read. 
Why is it continue left Mount Reed now? Okay, ritual behavior with the sample. The precise mechanism for the exchange of symbols and gifts required for requested desire's yield is not known, and even the anecdotal accounts of skeks are end in violent death. I'm missing some crucial information. So you're telling me you are a deadly creature? Are you a deadly creature? Gucci, 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 Gucci. Are you going to kill me? Take that wet willy. All right, how do I enter? I will enter. Beyond the door in the room, the cage was hidden, concealed in another cloak of inward-facing mirrors. Well, time to fix that. A hidden cage lined with mirrors. It is strange, almost poetic. The elaborate fantasy of self-reflection, concealment, con captivity. Yeah, that. Don't mind me. Good thing I have this trash can. At the cage, she finally cast her spell. But it was confusing, she confided at first. She took the photo, or she took the mag magic doll, the magic glue in the photo of her grandpa, and she combined them, and she wished very hard. I can only assume in this fantasy that next her wish would come true. In what child's story would it not? I'm, I'm guessing this ain't a fantasy. Peculiar human representation. Particular human representation. Generic human figure. Glued together, a tangible symbol of intention and desire. She put Grandpa in the cage, assuming what that was part of the ritual. She was not clear on how it worked. I don't think that cage is going to hold that thing, if that does come alive and become Grandpa. What precise instruction she could glean from her grandfather's magic book was complicated by her reading comprehension. She was so stupid! She wished with all her heart, and then she told me she waited a while for something, anything to happen. And after that time, she began to cry. I cried really hard, she said. I wanted Grandpa to be back. I wanted my parents to stop being so mean. And it heard me. It heard me wish for Grandpa to come back, for my parents to be different. I could feel it through the walls, and it felt me through the air. I asked her exactly what she meant. She could only repeat what, I, what she said. By this time, lunch was almost over. I said goodbye to Adrian, and she left to rejoin her class. I was left to consider my, our conversation. I believe the storytelling strategy I have employed was not unfruitful, but I must probe deeper if I can. Although I can be sure of nothing I interpret, the impressions I get may begin to help me get an idea of the right questions to ask. I'm beginning to think this isn't a story at all, and maybe this is actually happening, but that would be ridiculous and go against everything of my scientific education and teachings, of which I have many. Knowledge you acquired this week has given you access to certain topics or keywords you can discuss with Grandpa. <laughs> Wait, I don't want to. I don't want to consider discussing this when Grandpa emerges. No, I don't want to. But what if I don't? But what if I don't? You've also gained the following keyword: shell, <laughs> the penis. Consider discussing this when Grandpa emerges. No, I don't think I will. Why? I don't want Grandpa. Emerge. I'm just gonna say it. I don't really want Grandpa to emerge. Just gotta cut it like that. I don't really want Grandpa to emerge. I met again with Adrian in order to address her emotional outbursts in the past few weeks. It is our second time meeting, and while it is standard practice to have multiple sessions with the troubled student, as I assembled a report for the counseling department, I could not help but think, as we sat down in my office, that Adrian already seemed to show a remarkable change in self-esteem and confidence. And perhaps my and Mrs. Richardson's estimation of her as emotionally disturbed was erroneous. The paralyzing shyness and withdrawn attitude Adrian possessed last week was not entirely diminished, but she seemed to hold herself differently this week. However, this only lasted as long as our conversation pertained to initial introductory pleasantries. When I began once again asking about her parents, her feeling regarding her new school and her new home, she quickly lost what new confidence she had gathered up and withdrew into, into herself again. So once again, I partook in some collaborative make-believe, but this time I was aided by the fact that I had managed to do some research into Adrian's grandfather, and I had some insight into what she might actually be finding in the basement. Now, this may be overstepping my bounds, some as a school counseling caseworker, but this was all in the service of making Adrian comfortable and happy in this learning environment. In any case, I was able to dig up information regarding the grandfather by inquiring at the university in town. Not that I make it a habit of sleuthing, but I had a suspicion the grandfather was a professor there, or at least some sort of researcher, due to the fact that the newly constructed laboratory on campus I drive by every day bears his name in memorial. 
He was some sort of anthropologist or linguist or neuroscientist. I did not have to de dig that deep before the scope of his work became dizzying and I ran up against the limits of my undergraduate education. But back to the make-believe. Hello, Tommy. What is your, your grandpa like? Is he a smart man? Is he, uh, what do you call one of them big brains? Not anymore. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> but I'm teaching him. So he's grown a good deal then. You have been feeding him well. Yeah, he's getting bigger. <laughs> but he has a lot of room in his cage. He's still behind the bars. Yeah, well, he might be able to climb out eventually, but there's, there's this vent in the ceiling. Well, perhaps if he climbs out, I can meet him someday. Yeah, maybe, but well, he's not ready to leave. He can't take care of himself. I have to feed him, pick up after him. Oh, uh, you store the food in your lunchbox? That's nice of you to share. He can almost talk. You can't speak with him? He doesn't, he doesn't have a mouth, sort of. But how do you feed him? He has a mouth on the outside, on his shell, or the stuff that's his skin. I'm a little confused. And terrified. Maybe you can go through a typical day with your grandpa. Okay. I asked her how to exp to explain how exactly she goes about growing her grandpa, and Adrian began another tale. According to Adrian, in the week that passed, much had changed in the basement. Good. Oh, it's gone. <laughs> well, that's not good. The hairy thing that was here before is gone. Just a blood stain remains. Okie dokie then. Lunchbox is currently empty. Seek out food for grandpa. <laughs> Do I? I should see Grandpa first. Apparently, I should. Grandpa! I don't want to wake Grandpa. It was scary at first, she said, the way he moved, the way the doll's skin covered him. I wanted to interject. This somehow seemed inappropriate, but I kept listening. When I look at him, she continued, when I think about him, he grows and moves. It's like he's growing for me. He's growing bigger now, I asked. Yes, she said. Bigger. Every... <laughs> Oh, hey, Grandpa! Oh, no, no, Grandpa, don't do it! This begins your actual growing part of growing your Grandpa. Beneath the doll's burlap skin, the follicles knit together what resembles a proper person. Your Grandpa. Uh, whatever you say, pal. You are in charge of its cognitive development and diet until it is able to sustain itself. I don't want it to sustain itself. <laughs> Currently, you are observing, Grandpa. Please click the arrow back button below for a brief tutorial of your duties as caretaker. I might. I might need that. Here we can see a variety of options regarding growing your Grandpa. You will need to find it food and learning material before you can move on to next week. Some foods will make Grandpa happy, others merely content. Some food will make Grandpa disgusted to the point of nausea. Learning material is also scattered throughout the basement. Seek out vocabulary cards intended to help teach English and basic anthropoidic concept formation. <laughs> what was that last part? Analyze that. Anthropoidic concept formation. Okay. Uh, options highlighted related to navigating. Go to Grandpa. We'll let you perform all actions directly related to Grandpa feeding, teaching, observing. Study Corner will let you go over any documents you pick up as week go by. It's a good idea to learn about the work of the people who last occupied this space. Accessing the Kitchen Corner will let you search for food in the old refrigerator and prepare food for grandpa if need be. One final note, take care to explore the basement at your leisure. However, due to the entropic nature of clutter and trash, different weeks may allow you to find things you had previously not discovered. What about trash? Explore the basement. I'm gonna explore the basement. Good. A bulbous, what do you mean bulbous growth? What's a bulbous growth? Something appears to be growing from the wall. You take a closer look. Oh. Is that a smiley face I see on that? I see two, two eyes at the top and a curve of something that might be a smile. That is nice. That is nice. That's not nice. There we go. That Markiplier fusses with his hair. 
hair break is sponsored by this <laughs> anyway a pulsating sac all right the slimy membrane that it's that is its skin seems to contain something i might be able to open it with a blade i might you know you know what you right i might good god this is a lot of trash What is it? What was that sound? I heard a sound. Corroded battery. This isn't really food. Grandpa might eat it, however. Linguistics module. Hello. Vocabulary card. Teach Grandpa this word to read the notes of past educators. Great. Trash. Oh, shit. I don't have a light for over there. Well, this is good. This is all super good. I am uncomfortable. Mm, cabinet slouching under the weight of rot and refuse. Well, I'm here with the trash can, so rot and refuse is my job. Uh huh. Uh, oh, good. Blueberries! It looks edible. I doubt that. Why would blueberries in a wardrobe that was rotting and crushing under its own weight. Grandpa might like this. He might, or he might not. Who knows? Top drawer. This is so... You can examine this in detail in the study corner. Okay, I could probably see that note that I missed. Read now. Before we began, he had us all cover our faces completely. An earthenware pot was illegible, and on the inside, as we stole brief glances at it, we could see the interior was inlaid with mirrors. The illegible gave it small pieces of dough. Spoiled food, chicken feed, keeping it content. Great. The keeper gestured towards a small bag where the food composted and told us to be careful not to feed it any meat. No meat! I understand. I asked if the rotting food was enough to sustain it, how it might get nutrients from any of this. The keeper regarded me seriously and said it did not matter whether it was fed. The act of feeding it itself was what mattered. The act of feeding flesh is another act, however. He then gave me another series of grave warnings regarding not keeping any animal-derived foods near where I might be keeping it. Interesting. That is probably very important information that I should pay attention to. This is horrible. Hate that. Oh, interesting. Some kind of a key lock. There's two keyholes that I see. Nothing else to there. Safety 1951 and no markings on that one. Okay, good, great, love it, and also I hate it. Trash pile. Examine. Something about the painting looks strange. Oh, something about that painting. Nothing else in there. Let's just, let's just recap all the strange things we've seen in the basement so far. Weird hairy growth. Closet full of mannequins under the skit stairs. Grandpa. Grandpa version 2. Blueberries. The drawer full of doll heads. Everything else that I've forgotten. No, this seems weird. Alright. Okay. A folder full of radiographic images. You can examine this in detail later. I'm sure I can. Okay. Fiberglass insulation. This isn't really food. Grandpa might eat it, however. Okay. <laughs> Love me some wall cotton candy. It's I like the way it makes my gums tingle. Okay, alright, goodbye. Another trash pile? There's so many trash piles. The waste here smells particularly strong. Right. Okay. A simple paper doll might be useful in the construction of magic symbols. Okay. I like that I'm just uncovering more trash beneath the trash pile that I don't need to clean. I just worry about crumpled paper. That's all I care about. Alright, well, Grandpa, I got some goodies for you. Oh, man, I got goodies. Woo. Boy, I got goodies. I got goodies. Hi, Grandpa. 
Okay, let's go to the study corner. Examine education. Look over the documents. Okay, orientation note. I think two did I accidentally skip over? Read more. Uh, desirous yield. No. I Developing attachments to your colleagues. If you begin to suspect you are developing attachments to your colleagues, contact me as soon as possible. Interesting. However, the speed at which its desirous yield is produced can be dampened by several precautions. What do you mean desirous? Libidinal? 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 And emotional urges. So don't, don't fall in love. D objection. <laughs> Objectives. I gotta clean up the trash, grow my grandpa, that other thing that was very important to my survival, and don't fall in love. <laughs> Easy. Um, examine educational posters. Oh, hello. Hello. A set of procedures regarding disposable interment. Read now. The researcher will seal off the enclosure bars ensuring minimal gas leakage during the later fumigation process and then retrieve the burn barrel and place it in the near enclosure. Allow at least 48 hours of time where the current growth cycle experiences no human-related stimuli. Do not enter the enclosure area nor any part of the basement. Ideally, you will not be on the grounds at all. After 48 hours, two researchers will enter the basement wearing their assigned mirror mask, mirror apron, and powered air purifying respirator. The researcher will use the vent system to fumigate the enclosure area. Wait 30 minutes and then use the fan system to ventilate the enclosure. Keep the fans running during steps 3 and 4. I, oh man, I don't know if I'm gonna die. Uh, I, I feel like I'm ill prepared to grow my grandpa. Re enter the enclosure wearing your assigned mirror mask. Babada, organism in complete dormancy. If it is not in full dormancy, be assured that its capacity to act against you will be greatly diminished with your assigned power drills. Quickly remove any enclosure bars needed to access the organism. Put them aside for later reinstallation. Put the organ. What was that? Grandpa? Put the organism into the burn barrel. Incinerate the organism thoroughly. Wait for any smoke to be properly cleared by the fan system. Turn off the fans. One researcher will retrieve the nucleus from the ash and place it in the mirror box. The other researcher will sift through the ash and place any other substantial which remains in the biohazard bin in the room outside of the enclosure area. The bin is locked for safety purposes. The code is 323245. Got it! The researchers will fill out a termination form and leave it for Dr. Hart. You've, oh, I don't think I should talk to Grandpa about that one. I feel like that would be a bad idea. Wham, no family togetherness here. File cabinet one. Oh my goodness, so much to go through. Oh, uh, what is that, donuts? Cashews? It looks edible. Grandpa might like this. That he might. Coins? Whoa! Ah, read now. It was said to pass from one family of step people to another, but pressed on its ultimate origin, somewhere to the south coiled in a bowl covered in incantations buried inside, buried upside down by a graveyard, a common late antiquity demon trap. The keeper, an elderly man in failing health, was ready to expound on and on about the dangers of the organism, but when I asked more pointed questions about the history of its acquisition, I was given curt responses that had a way of circling back to vague warnings. Almost as if he really wanted to warn you about something. Almost as if you should listen to said warnings. Okay. Cabinet two. Gah, so much trash. Grandpa! That's handy. Oh, there's, there's something secret at the bottom here. Wait a minute. Ooh. Oh, oh, we got something false bottom. False bottom. I'm gonna be happy about this. You remove the taped down fabric to reveal the cabinet's wooden bottom. Ooh. Negotiate notation regarding sample exoskeletons. Each growth from a cycle does not require a shell, but you may find the sample will often try to seize on something somewhat flexible it can grow into, along with any desirous yield it may generate. Or else it will move from one shell to the next as it outgrows him. In the small amount of time I have spent in preparation, I have noticed it tends towards human forms. However, we should keep a tight lid on the anthropoidic seal in order to be cautious before we begin to experiment with exposing it long-term to anthropoid stimuli. I don't know what any of that meant. 
to my colleagues. I don't mean to be overly severe in tone, but Dr. Hart's work is very important and the material we are working with is potentially very dangerous. I will be handing out a copy of this note as a reminder to everyone. I'm not trying to single any particular person out. We have all misconceptions about the nature of this project from time to time. Without out of the way, here are some things to keep in mind. The active growth must be thoroughly terminated via the correct procedures at the very least four weeks after dormancy is interrupted. Well, <laughs> what can you do? It doesn't matter what you've done or haven't done regarding tests or procedures or how much the anthropoidic vacuum has been disrupted, we are not ready to go beyond four weeks at this point. A step-by-step -step guide determination has been posted by the enclosure wall. Please, please, please do not place the educational posters over this posting. <laughs> please, please, please. Do not disrupt the anthropoidic vacuum without Dr. Hart's prior consultation. In any case of any emergency where the vacuum is disrupted, put on your equipment and begin the lockdown procedure. Make an extensive note of when and how the breach has occurred. If you find the habitat empty, page Dr. Hart immediately, but do not attempt to speak with anyone else. This thing can get very smart. I'm sure you're all aware of from the stories we heard on our acquisition trip. The greatest caution should be used when dealing with a potential aggressive mimicry scenario. Please seek me out if you have any more questions. Ah. Well, I aim to make it super smart. Good thing me as a little girl, this all goes over my head because I can't read. Medical imaging. You slip the radiographic images you found onto the machine's display. Do I? Power. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh boy. Propagation number 21, day 19 after dormancy. Anth. Vacuum. Broken. Yes. Term. Notes in detail. Regarding the mimic hypothesis, a participant entered the sealed chamber adjacent to Whiskers, growth cycle 21, which had been freed from the anthropoidic vacuum, constructed quite econom economically from plastic and broken mirrors. The first propagation's original earthenware vacuum was shattered during the move-in. Between the two, there was a semi-opaque glass panel that allowed observation both ways. The human participant was asked to think of someone in the popular consciousness, fictional or no, and cogitate in, on their image, personality, face if possible, voice if possible, etc. Our participant chose Jesus of Nazareth, and with weekly repeated exposures to the participant's imagings, propagation number 21 began forming what resembled an anthropoid Nazarene in the fold of its spines. Previous human-oriented tests have always bore out a result that Whiskers would form an anthropoid team member, be it me or Dr. Hart or Gerald, or we assumed it was merely mimicking one of us. Dr. Hart has always contended the desirous yield or the anthropoid reproduction Whiskers creates when in contact with human beings has always been based on the conception and relation to the person through someone else. With this framework, the desirous yield is not actually a replica of a person, or if it is, it is only a replica of the fiction of a person generated in the mind of another. So it's not actually making replicas of people, it's making what people imagine that person to be, which is different from who the person is, probably. The desirous yield was not Jesus Christ, but a participant's image of Jesus assembled from their religious upbringing, religious artwork, depictions of popular culture, etc. This radiograph was taken right before the destruction of the growth cycle while Whiskers was rendered unconscious via fumigation. It seems like every successive propagation the stem cells in the organism work a little faster, but I'm not paranoid. It's technically deathless, yes, but we're burning up whatever knowledge it's gained from when we incinerated. I don't believe in magic just yet. Well, start believing. This seems a little magical, you know, if I had to guess. Oh, God, what is this? Oh, what is this? I don't want to know. Uh, taken to calling it whiskers, of course. Yeah, whiskers is more accurate. Needles are more like suprasensory follicles or spine. Nerve nets distributed, blah, blah, blah. The things that I don't understand. X-ray, spine, dense optical arrangements similar to compound eyes, so it sees through them. Happy to be, happy to be, happy to be. It certainly is a robust enough creature to inspire marvel that is not untinged with fear. Great. I don't know, what am I looking at? What am I looking at? Exposure to mammalian forms, part of a series of zoomorphic influences led further understanding of blah, 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 blah. I write simulating the previous, uh, oh God. And yet at no time does it function as the thing it becomes except in the sense that it mimics it. That is to say, when Whiskers is removed from dormancy and replicates a rabbit's morphology, it is not seeing from the rabbit's eyes nor smelling from the rabbit's nose, but pretending that it does and doing a very good job at it. So it's using it as a puppet. Huh. That? Uh-huh. Strange thing about it was that the subject of the image was found nowhere near the enclosure. 
It's almost like a piece of whiskers fell off and scurried it. Gross. I feel like we've learned a lot since then, but at the time I remember speaking about the morphology being weird, not really even resembling any extant zoomorphic structure, besides maybe a cuttlefish. Then I happened to open the thing up. Inside were all these little dead amoeba-like things, but they all sort of looked like they had faces, faces that were just barely there. After I took the radiograph, I gathered it up and went to go throw it in the biohazard bin. As I walked by the bars of the enclosure, I could hear Whiskers suddenly going wild, flopping around and grunting excitedly. Could it have smelled the cuttlefish thing? Would it eat its own production? I guess it's technically flesh. This is beyond the scope of the project, but it could be that without the stimulus of an active brain, or more specifically a healthy or active brain capable of face recognition and theory of mind, Whiskers begins to pull whatever it can from the limited data available to it. Again, this is not our focus at this time, but I left a note for Dr. Hart just in case he wanted to take a look. Gross. Okay, well, I, I, I've I, learned a lot, but also I didn't take a lot of that in. So, uh, save, I guess, and kitchen. Search upper fridge. What? Lettuce. Okay. Lower fridge. Banana. I need to feed grandma two acceptable foods, eat and seek out things to feed grandpa. I have battery. Blueberries. Fiberglass, cashews, lettuce, very old let leaf of lettuce. It is flaky and stiff. A banana, probably be okay. Blueberries with hard stone-like exteriors. I'm gonna go with the cashews and the banana, I guess. I think. I don't know. I don't know. Soft fruit or vegetable? Banana, unappealing item? Do I need an unappealing item? Is this necessary? I'm confused. If you put a battery in the banana, it will be a super banana. Conceal? Why am I trying to conceal it? The battery is concealed in the browning banana flesh. Soft fruit or vegetable. Don't I have... I have lettuce. Blueberries. Am I missing something? Well, I don't particularly know what else to do, so I'm going to go to Grandpa. Hi, Grandpa. You examine Grandpa, noting its movements, respiration, and general mood. I don't like its general mood. The spindle's just... The whiskers. Grandpa seems sort of sluggish and bored. You get the feeling it may be more content and readily cooperative once fed and taught a word or two. Okay. No response. Uh, Grandpa! Would you like to review the tutorial before you start? You will not be- Is this a tutorial for feeding Grandpa? This brief tutorial will go over the basics of feeding Grandpa via induction of your unprotected insula. <laughs> By what? Grandpa has stimulated the production of tooth enamel to mimic a human mouth. It will need to be fed through this in order to properly learn and grow. First, you will need to select an item from the lunchbox. Click the lunchbox in the bottom right of the corner. The contents of the lunchbox will be displayed. Select an item from the lunchbox. Doing so will fill your hand with this item. Notice that any food can be put back in the lunchbox by clicking on the lunchbox with a full hand. Before Grandpa can be fed, it must judge the food by its smell. Hover your hand above Grandpa's olfactory bulbs. If Grandpa is pleased, it will allow you to feed it. Most foods Grandpa will accept, however, getting Grandpa to consume other things requires some culinary deception. When Grandpa is willing to be fed, hover your hand over its mouth and click. Grandpa will then consume the food. Good luck on- Good luck! Why do I need good luck? Why do I need luck? Why would I need luck? You approach the small window set in the jail bar. Oh god, no, no, no. Click on Grandpa's nostril. If Grandpa is enticed by the smell, click on Grandpa's- <laughs> You want a concealed battery? You want it? Unable to detect the unappealing item, we'll accept it for feeding. I don't know why I would give it the un- Although quickly consumed, the meal seems to be causing some indigestion. Why would I do that? What? What? Plaintive wine, clearly disappointed by the lack of substance, dejectly locomotes back to its favorite corner. <gasps> what did I do? Oh, examine stomach content. There's a key. Good. 
Good. Good. I just, this is so, why? Why? Try to save Flock with a key you found. Pops open. Oh, good. Who are you? A photo of your mother as a young woman. The recognition of this face kicks off a cascade of emotion and deep meaning within your psyche. Good. Does this not... Does none of the... What is going on in that picture? What is it going on? Rotate that one for everybody. What is happening there? Can I not have anything else? Uh, a deep meaning. My psyche is deep and meaningful. My deep meaningful psyche. Why? What do you mean? I don't know why I did that, but I'm assuming that that was important. I'm a good grandpa, I guess. Anything else in your react? All right, let's try the feeding a little, a little better this time. Uh, how would you like some cashews? Indifferent. Okay, well, let's try to get you some good. We'll say it is hunger, but that's all. Blueberry finds it palatable. meal appears to have been sufficient. Grunts its appreciation and locomotes towards its favorite corner. Yay. Yay. Oh, observe. It seems sort of sluggish and bored. It seems bigger than it was before. You get the feeling and be more content. Okay, let's teach Grandpa. How about... Hello, oh, Grandpa, card number one. Yep, that's tutorial. Oh boy, okay. The vocabulary word you picked will appear in the top left corner. In the bottom right is a pentagon that is divided up into eight sections. Each section of the pentagon will be highlighted briefly. I always don't take this thing. Why do I need to teach Grandpa? How do I know any of this? <laughs> I just needed to freak out for a little bit. You will control a small round icon that sits above the pentagon by using your mouse. The ball is constrained to the limits of the pentagon. The goal is to keep the icon over the highlighted area and move it around as the area changes sections around the pentagon. When you hold left click above the correct highlighted area, the icon will start to vibrate along with the simulated vocal cords and the current letter of your word will begin to turn red. Keep holding over the highlighted section to adjust your icon as it changes place. Soon the letter will become fully red. After every letter becomes red, Grandpa will pr proudly pronounce the word you to you and it will be considered learned. Teaching Grandpa these words will accelerate its cognitive development and lead to further breakthroughs in general intelligence. Teach word Grandpa, yes! Yes, I- hi. Okay. Okay. Oh. What? I'm not seeing any red letter. Is that the one? Whoa, oh wait, I got something there. Oh, oh, yeah, that's, so it's gotta be this when it's on this one. There we go. Who are? Okay, so the, the icon will jiggle like that when it's ready. This is horrible. Not that one, not that one, not that one. Duh, 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 duh. Duh, 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 duh. Grand da 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 Pa Pa Deep within Grandpa, strange membranes phonate confidently. Uh huh. Yeah. Good. Having completed the lesson, you take a look back at the vocabulary module card and the notes there written by administrators of the past. Grandpa, 
General pronunciation. See below. We have done several sessions of what we are calling familiar relation simulation. I and a co-researcher sit in chairs opposite the enclosure. We are wearing the usual masks and we begin to act out a scene, mostly through improvisation that might roughly resemble a kitchen table conversation between an immediate family. Repeated trials would reveal, although our simulated conversations were purposefully vague and unspecific regarding persons or and identities, we would only address each other as brother, father, sister, etc., etc. It soon became apparent the encoded information and associations we unconsciously drawn upon when he Hearing and speaking these words was being picked up on by Whiskers in its psi type field of reception interpretation of brain mind event somatic content. My co researcher William noticed this in a simulation where Whiskers was given a role as a sister and he as a brother. I was the father. Whiskers began responding to certain prompts with unusual specificity, as well as a general pattern of, and timber of speech that continued with unusual consistency. As soon as the simulation ended and we left the enclosure, William let me know that Whiskers was almost certainly drawing from encoded memories of his late sister, mapping out exactly what regions and centers of neural activity are intercepted by the psi type field will take extensive neuroimaging that we do not have at this site. Currently, we only have less precise portable equipment. However, our experiences so far are eerily in line with folk knowledge and folk explanations regarding the being's access to desires, and we can begin to infer it has access to certain portions of the limbic system and the ventral temporic cortex. You step away and store the module. God, this is great. This is great. This is so good. I feel so good about what I'm doing. Is there like another, uh, how you doing? How you doing, Grampy? Sluggish and bored. I don't imagine you're gonna like the. Bleh. I don't imagine you're gonna like the fiberglass. No, no, no. Well, I don't have any other food, really. I think I missed out because the banana probably would have been very good for it, but because I got the key, I only have an indifferent thing, right? So I'm gonna feed it one of the things I have. I don't imagine the blueberries would be very- Where'd my blueberries go? Wait a minute, where's my blueberries? Didn't I have blueberries? Are they not blueberries? They might not be blueberries. Oh no, we like the blueberries. I already fed it the blueberries. I'm, I'm an idiot. All right, let's feed grandma, uh, grandpa, uh, let's feed, uh, let's feed you. Cashews probably better, I guess. There you go. There you go, pal. Okay. Okay. Feed Grandpa complete! Teach Grandpa. Hello. Yes. Great. Grandpa, it's time to learn. Hello. Hello! I'm not sure about that one. Um, I, I, that one wasn't quite as good. Ah, we are already encountering some difficulties as Whisker's subjectivity is so much determined by a diverse and dynamic array of influences. It attempts to mimic the thoughts and desires it passively intercepts, and these imitations go on to structure the basis of its identity. Only later in Whisker's growth cycle does it begin to form an identity that are coherent and capable of resembling a sane, rational human being when engaged in conversation. One must imagine how hard it would be to converse with someone who is not yet oriented in one particular way towards who or how they are because they might have 20 different honest answers to those questions, all of them mixed together and muddled. Because of this, we have started with the basics of conversation, greetings, partings, identifying one another, forming questions, etc. It is fortunate Whiskers' current growth, 19 I believe, has developed a mostly accurate human mouth simulation. Hello was a bit of a challenge in the previous growth as it had failed to develop an adequate organ to act as a human tongue. Great. And I guess I'm done for this week. Oh boy, more grandpa growing next time. Well, um, I, I, uh, so, uh, I don't know if I'm morally okay with everything, but as far as my objectives are going in the clean the basement, check. Growing grandpa, well on its way. I'll consider that a check for this week. Uh, not dying from that horrible thing that I was talking about before. I'm still alive if that was the objective. And then number four, the other one! Sounds like that's mission complete, so that'll do it for this episode. Unless Grandpa comes after me and decides to kill me and open me up and... I don't like... observe. 
Oh no, God no. Oh no, it, it, it approaches the bars, it begins to unknit its skin. Oh no, what have I done? The inner grandpa, though still not fully formed, is revealed. It may be fruitful to speak with if it could respond. Oh no! No! Ask about Wish. Okay, I was about to end the week. With a great deal of effort, Grandma gurgles fragmented thoughts through its ill-formed lips. Of course it does. Mother, ah, uh, will, father. New lives out of the air. The dark spiny filaments that make up the majority of Grandpa's body begin to oscillate rapidly. The air behind your eyes, I can taste it. Great. That was about Grandpa's shell. With a great deal of effort. Skin, my body, all human skin around me, give more. Oh, I don't know if I want to. Grow more to fit. I don't know. Biohazard bin. I don't know if I should talk about this, but I will. However, it fails to produce more than a wet and frustrated sputtering noise. That makes sense. Goodbye. Silently, it sends back into a shell. I'll do it for this episode. I am disturbed. But I will continue growing Grandpa, and I will see what Grandpa wants to uh, talk about next week in the next episode. Thank you. Check out anything else. Uh, done. Okay, yeah, goodbye.